Hi, my name is Rahul Banerjee. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center in Seattle, Washington. I'm here at the 2025 IMS meeting in Toronto. It's been a fantastic meeting so far. So in terms of what's new at the meeting, I'll focus on CAR-T therapy, which I think is the most interesting you know, immunotherapy that we have in our arsenal so far to treat patients with multiple myeloma. Some of you listening may know, for example, earlier this year at the ASCO meeting, they presented data showing that for patients in the very first US trial of Stultacell, Carvicti, um, 98 patients were treated a third of them are alive and disease-free five years out. These are patients treated almost a decade ago, median of six prior lines of therapy. Truly, these are patients who otherwise probably would have passed away from myeloma, and now a third of them are alive, disease-free five years out. Excellent progress, but we have work to do. We need to make that number 100%. We're working on that here at the IMS meeting. I think there's a lot of interesting data around strategies, one, to get CAR-T therapy to more people, and two, to figure out why post-CAR-T relapses are happening, how to prevent them. So just I'll give one example. I'll give two examples. One, there are data around Arlocell, which is a different CAR-T therapy targeting a different target called GPRC5D. The two approved CAR-T therapies target BCMA, which is Idacel and Siltacel. Arlocell targets GPRC5D, the same target as Talquetamab or Talvi, as some of you may know, but that's a bispecific. This is a CAR-T therapy. And so we saw, uh, presented yesterday by Dr. Ball, results showing that that particular CAR-T therapy worked just as well whether someone was BCMA exposed, whether they previously received BCMA therapy or not. That may seem obvious that, well, it's not targeting BCMA, but I think it's really exciting for us because historically, patients who've had to go from one CAR-T therapy to another CAR-T therapy have just not done as well. And we've wondered, why is that? Is that just because the T cells aren't working? Is that because we're using the BCMA target again and again? Long story short, I think it's basically that we're just using BCMA again and again. And if you put your eggs into a different basket, you may see some encouraging results. Similarly, yesterday at the late breaking abstract session, Dr. Cohen from Penn presented data, a uh, single arm study, randomization at the end, of sevostimab consolidation after Idacel and Siltacel. Sevostimab is an investigation of bispecific targeting yet another target called FCRH5. So not BCMA, which is a target of the two approved CAR-T therapies and Elranatumab and Teclistimab and Lindoseltimab. Not GPRC5D, which is a target of Talquetamab and the CAR-T product Arlocell that I just described, but a third target called FCRH5. And the idea is that if you use that after CAR-T, can you perhaps delete any relapses that are about to start in the months following CAR-T? We don't know yet. We don't have long enough follow-up, but at least there, Savathama was very well tolerated. People use that word a lot, but truly very well tolerated. Very few toxicity side effects that patients experience were quite well for them, even in the months after CAR-T. People sometimes worry that if you start you know, putting T-cell immunotherapies on top of each other, you might start seeing a lot of immune side effects, like cytokine release syndrome. Didn't really see much of that in the way at all. And so we're looking for more follow-up. Don't have randomized data here yet, but it may be that for some patients, if we can figure out who they are, it may be that starting with a CAR-T and chasing it with a bispecific afterwards to knock out whatever disease is left may be the way forward. Mm -hmm.